All right, here we are. Welcome, my name is Jill Davey, and thank you for dropping in for this practice, whether you're with us tonight on the Zoom or um, after the fact on YouTube, I appreciate you being here. <clears throat> tonight, uh, I was saying to the participants that are here that um, it's a, a Scottish-inspired practice tonight. I've just put two words in the in the chat here in our Zoom room. Uh, one of them is dumbfungled, and the other is scunnered. <laughs> These are not poly words, but they are um, old Scott words. And um, there, there's um, I don't know. It, I don't think it's a website, but there's a, a hashtag called the Scottish Word of the Week. Uh, and uh, it's on social media like Facebook, Instagram stuff, Scottish Word of the Week. And uh, dumbfungled, so it's D-U-M-F-U-N-G-L-E-D, dumbfungled, it is um, in the little meme that's going around says to be mentally and physically worn out. And when this was posted and various people have been sharing it and saying, yes, yes, I can relate to that, or that's me this week, or that's definitely how I'm feeling these days, mentally and physically worn out, some fungal. Um, and then another Scottish word of the week that was going around recently was scunnered, S-C-U-N-N-E-R-E-D, scunnered. And um, according to the meme, it says, um, fed up, annoyed, discontented, and weary. <laughs> and lots of folks were like, yes, yes, to that, to that, to that. Fed up, discontented, annoyed, weary. Um, I, I and When I saw both of those words, I was like, yep, I could relate to that. Certainly not always, not all the time, but at times, absolutely. And um, yeah, so these uh, kind of stuck out for me and, and I uh, did a little bit more reflecting on what this is about and why do are lots of folks resonating with this at, at times, maybe certainly not all the time. There's times of joy, times of ease. A lot of time, like in a yoga class or a meditation class, when people stop and pause or you know they're following along with the guidance and they just stop all the dizziness and the input and the distraction and they just start to rest start to slow down to land to relax and one of the very common things that's noticed is what we call wired but tired where the body, the energy body, the physical body, the mind is agitated, wired um, in hyperdrive, in overdrive, in overstimulation. And then underneath that wired, anxious, stressed energy is a profound and deep fatigue wired but tired and this is very calm most people do not know how tired they are until they stop and this happened even this morning with a meditation class and somebody you know after the practice they were like oh i'm so tired and it's just because they were already that tired but they hadn't noticed it because they just kept going and doing and doing all the things and um yeah, so this is part of being mentally and physically worn out. And we may not notice it because there's this overlay of keep going, do the things, you know, all the input, all the stimulation. And this uh, weariness, this um, discontent in, in Buddhism. So, so we we might ask ourselves like, why? why, why are we feeling that way? If we are feeling that way, why are so many of us feeling these ways, um, worn out, weary, discontent? 
um, annoyed, etc. And for those of us that follow and practice Buddhist meditation or wisdom teachings, we would recognize these things as um, what's called dukkha. Uh, dukkha is a Pali word, and it's sometimes summarized as suffering. Probably a more relatable term is stress or disease, discontent. And it's the a fuller definition, if you want to call it a definition, a fuller description, more fulsome description of this word dukkha is um, aging, sickness, and death are dukkha. Not getting what one wants is dukkha. Um, I'm not seeing the exact words um, from the Pali Canon, but uh, and then being, what's the word, being close to, or it basically being close with what you don't want is also dukkha. So not being able to get what you want and then being close with what you don't want is dukkha. And um, sorrow, lamentation, grief, and despair are dukkha. And so all of these things are part of the human condition. There is no being. <laughs> there is no being that does not experience these things. And the Buddha never said life is suffering. As far as, I mean, I wasn't there, but as, this isn't in the, in the suttas. It's not, it, this is like where people have extrapolated and turned it a little bit. So it's not that life is suffering because we know it isn't. It's also joyful and beautiful and interconnected and full of love and compassion. It's, it's not, not all of life is suffering, but part of this life experience definitely is, has suffering in it. It's inescapable for all of us. Um, it's not inescapable ultimately as we um, are inspired by the life of the Buddha. So these things of being dumbfungled and uh, scunnered uh, are part of what, what we might call dukkha suffering. And uh, this is one of the things that I keep on my, my desk here beside me it's been with me a long time now um, some of you have seen it before this is my my um my version of a snow globe it's a mud globe <laughs> it's got the jar of water with mud in the bottom and it takes very little for it to get agitated <laughs> and this is like this is my mind it takes very little for it to get agitated or for the body to get agitated, for the uh, energy body to be agitated, because there's so much stimulation, so much input, um, so much greed, hatred, and delusion, aversion, desire. I'm a hindered being, like most of us. And yet, I know from direct experience and from the Dharma, that the practice and the path does bring peace and stillness and ease, calm, clarity, sometimes wisdom, a little bit, sometimes. <laughs> and I absolutely trust it because I know directly and personally, as, as do all of you, whether you have ever practiced meditation or not, you know you've had times of ease, of clarity, of peace, wisdom, spaciousness. There's lots of different ways that can come from being in nature, from being with uh, all of our animal teachers, uh, animal companions, and uh, being in places that remind us of compassion, wisdom 
lots of ways to uh, to return to this state. And one of the really important factors is stillness. Stillness and mm, stopping the external input to rest this weary heart and mind. The, these dumbfungled and scunnered experiences, descriptions of weariness, worn outness, of fatigue, the wired but tired experiences are asking, showing, pointing that we need rest. And a meditative practice is, can be, is often a place of cultivating rest by developing calm, by simplifying, choosing an anchor, returning to the anchor. Everything gets shaken up again. We remember, oh yeah, and we've just returned to the anchor with patience and kindness, resting, resting, resting. And it, it does take some effort and intention, but often much less than we think. So even right now, we'll just do a little thought experiment. So if I offer, see if you can see what happens with your attention here. So think of and feel the tip of your nose. And then without moving your hands, just feel where your left hand is right now. And then feel where the soles of your feet are. And then feel this next breath. You see, it doesn't take a lot of effort. You can direct your attention, and we do direct our attention all the time. Huh, the words, the invitation here is to feel the tip of the nose. Direct the attention there. You know, you don't have to rub your nose to feel it. There's sensation, unless there's some physical challenge where there's numbness or something, but can probably feel some coolness or some temperature or some sensation, even it's a little tingling or you might feel the inside of the nose as you breathe something. Um, different parts of the body have different amounts of sensations, but the point is that it doesn't take a lot of effort to direct the attention. Um, if we have the idea that our meditation practice means I need to stay at that place, I need to like, just keep my attention on every single breath to be a good meditator. This is, uh, first of all, incorrect. <laughs> and secondly, unskillful, unhelpful, and creates tension and striving and way too much effort. The, um, this, there, there are practices where we can develop that sustaining attention, but in a daily life practice, you may not be practicing with a sustaining attention concentration. Rather, it's more important to just direct the attention to an anchor that you choose. At times, the awareness gets stirred up again. And gently, like with as much effort as we just practiced, return to the anchor, begin again because we want to practice with patience and kindness, as I already mentioned. So you can see that just while I was talking here, that just from the stillness, uh, that, that mud settled and um, a lot of clarity arose. <clears throat> and stillness, it, I, I like that the mud settles down. It's like gravity. <laughs> it's just 
there is something to the direction of settling down, feeling the connection of the body with the ground and resting in the support that is there. So it, it's the direction of that mud settling is is telling is a, an important guidepost and it's it's from a lot of stability and groundedness that clarity arises and um wisdom and clear seeing can happen hmm. so Nelsie, I want to just uh, tuck into a practice so that whether or not you're feeling dumbfungled or scunnered, uh, it is still a great support to practice resting this weary heart and mind. I don't see how, I don't see how you can't have a weary heart and mind in these these days. It's a wearying world. It's a heartbreaking world. And, and and we have the practice that can help us um, develop calm, simplicity, patience, kindness, and rest. So short talk tonight, shorter anyways, and um, some real time to practice. And so the invitation, I'll guide us a little bit uh, in the beginning and then a, lots of silence and a few reminders along the way just to gently begin again. Um, the invitation will be to choose an anchor, an anchor for our attention, because that, that gives us a, a ground, a resting place that when the attention get stirred up again very easily because you remembered something or you heard something or you felt a sensation or all the different sense doors that um, stir us up, that's going to happen. And that's not a problem. It doesn't mean you're doing the practice wrong. When that happens, you know, when it's noticed, awareness notices, mm, I'm off in some ruminating about something that has happened or worrying about something that we imagine might happen, etc. We choose the anchor so that we have a place of returning, like, oh, it's, it's, uh, it should feel like that. Like, oh, I can just rest. I don't have to figure anything out right now. In fact, if I let myself rest, I will be better able to respond to what needs responding to. So the anchor, lots of folks in meditation choose the breath as an anchor, just feeling the, the body breathing in a, in a chosen place. So sometimes the center of the belly, the movement there, or the center of the chest and the rise and fall of the chest, or the sensation at the nostrils of cool air or warm air coming and going. And for lots of folks, feeling the breath as an anchor creates more agitation. If the system is already aggravated or um, it's not necessarily that either. It's just a, a close attention to the breath can often create more tension for folks. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And so to just be skillful and kind, talk about kindness again, that if the breath feels too tight for you to pay attention to, to find rest with, then you'll choose a different anchor, like maybe just the sensation of your hands wherever they're resting or your feet. Uh, depending on your environment, another helpful anchor could be just hearing sounds. So right now when I'm resting, when I'm not talking, there's a hum of the computer and 
not a lot of sounds in my environment right here right now but if there's other sounds in your environment in your home that could be a really helpful anchor just to notice the sounds come and go and they're not in your control all right i said it would stop and then i kept talking so annoying now i'm really stopping okay so this is a practice of rest so please Adjust and get what supports you need here so your body, energy, heart, and mind can feel calm and supported. Uh, so I'm just going to adjust my posture here. You might want to cushion. If your body is really um, some fungal, then, then you might like to lay down for the practice. Maybe, you, you know, and um, like last night, I was teaching caregivers and it's like, if they fall asleep, is that's it. I'm totally down with that because they need that rest. And so um, on a meditation retreat, we would definitely be encouraging wakefulness. But um, if you really need to rest, please do. It's okay for this practice tonight. Mm. Okay, so once you've brought in what supports your body needs, cushions or blankets, or you're maybe laying down, you want to bring in enough supports that you can come into stillness, like we did with the mud jar. You just placing the agitated being into stillness. <laughs> and then finding a posture or position for the eyes that's supportive for your practice tonight. So maybe eyes resting down. They could be closed or slightly open. For some, it may be restful and calming, soothing and kind to gaze at something peaceful in your environment. And so once we bring the body and the eyes to rest, we want to begin just by feeling how it is right now. Is there agitation? Is there confusion? Is there discontent or annoyance? Is there boredom? Restlessness? Is there tension? And how do you know if any of those states are there? How do you, where do you feel that? Sometimes there can be kind of a muddy sensation in the area of the head or flutteriness, like bees buzzing in a hive. Or tension in the belly. What are the shoulders telling you? What is the jaw asking you to be aware of? The tongue.
And so it's very important to just give ourselves time to notice how, how are you meeting yourself? How are you, dear one? You don't really know until you slow down, pay attention and ask. How is the heart, the mind, the energy, the body? Underneath the wiredness, do you experience tiredness? And I'll be quiet for another few minutes here and together we'll all just be meeting ourselves. How are you, dear one? And then we cultivate the intention to rest the weary heart and mind. And with the mud jar, we can see a representation of how resting has a direction with the ground, ground that is already here supporting us, the ground that is here in present moment. Is there any tension keeping you away from experiencing that ground? Any tension that could let go a little bit? Experience your weight, your heaviness, your softness, your width. What a beautiful gift in a world that tries to make us smaller and lighter. Allow heaviness and width and softness. Soft belly. The muscles of the face slide down. The weight of the shoulders slide down. The weight of the hips rest down. The bones. Rest down. The 
and feel that very little effort is needed to be upright, awake, No tension is needed, just a very minimal effort to be upright and awake. These next few minutes of silence, we'll all practice together just with this part of resting down. Sometimes back and down is a helpful cue. When we lean forward and push forward into life, rest back to the back body or the spine and down to the sacrum. And from this place of settling, grounded, we begin now to develop and cultivate calm through the simplicity of choosing an anchor for attention. The anchor could be one place of breath in the body where it's felt most easily and excessively. Or it could be the sensation of hands or feet as they rest. Or sound as it comes and goes. So just choose one anchor now that will return to through the remainder of the practice. Try not to change partway through the practice thinking, oh, that might be better. Just let it be simple. Trust whatever is arising and just rest with that anchor now. Remember how we did that little test before the practice of directing our attention to different places in the body? And it takes very little effort. Here, dear one, just rest here.
And at times for all of us, attention will have moved away to other thoughts and plans, worries, sensations, sounds. And the practice is with patience and kindness to begin again. Just like training a puppy with kindness and patience and sometimes treats. Here, dear one, come back and rest. Come back and sit. In a world of discontent, wanting and not wanting, we practice contentment. Just this really simple present moment enoughness. Rest the weary heart and mind, beginning again with your anchor. Turning to your natural state.
And for these last few minutes of the practice, see what it might feel like if awareness itself could just rest. We've simplified the input of the sense doors by resting the eyes and being still. We've chosen an anchor. And then what does it feel like if awareness could just rest? Simple, kind, patient, rest. And in a few moments, when the singing bowl sounds, see if you can continue resting through to the end of the third sound. And hearing the vibration, the resonance from this grounded place of clarity and calm. And when the end of the third sound passes, to gently end your practice in the way that resonates for you.
Another little demonstration of effort that I find helpful is um, when you bring your hands up in front of you and then you close your eyes without looking very slowly, bring your hands together and try to just touch the little fingertips. And then just feel all the sensation that's in that slightest light touch of just the fingertips. So much sensation and awareness there. And it takes no effort, such a light touch, such a light effort. And you can feel so much sensation there. So, Sometimes trying too hard in our practice to like be on the anchor or to be a good meditator or to become anything is uh, creating more tension and more weariness. And maybe it doesn't take as much effort. What it takes is the right kind of effort, wise effort, right effort, curiosity, kind effort. Um, effort is a very important part of the path, but it's quite different than our usual striving effort um, in our capitalist culture. Yeah, so thank you for joining. If you joined us on YouTube, and um, I'll put some links underneath. Uh, there's for there's a New Year's meditation coming up. Well, depending what year you're watching this in, but uh, uh, 22, 23, 2022, 23 New Year um, in in Guelph, Ontario, Southern Ontario. Uh, so I'll put a link for that if um, if that's possible for you. It would be sweet to see you and practice with you then. Um, and what was the other thing? Yeah, that's all. I'll put the Scottish words as well. Thank you.